Hello, this is Jeremy, and this week our uh, work on functions with graphs and everything is going to come through working with more real-life applications through sections 5.5 and 5.6. Now, section 5.5 to me is really laying down uh, a few new ideas we need to be able to solve problems in 5.6, which is really the focus this week. And what is 5.6? Optimization. Trying to find the maximum or minimum, the absolute maximum or minimum in an applied problem. Take a look at this example to kind of get an idea of what that's looking for. We're given the price demand and cost equations for a certain situation. And notice that the first part of the question is saying, what price should we charge and how many cameras should we make to maximize the revenue? So in other words, we want to figure out what values of X cause us to have the most money coming in. So a very uh, down to earth type of problem. So when we approach these, we're going to, like I said, use the ideas of section 5.5 because that was all about finding the absolute min or absolute max of a function. So let's see how it applies here. First of all, I'm asked to maximize the weekly revenue. To be able to maximize the weekly revenue, I need to know what the revenue function is. And so this is where some of my memories from a few chapters ago comes in and says, okay, well, the revenue R of X is always equal to X, the number you're making, times the price. But we have price here, so I can put that down here and say, actually, this is 400x minus 0.4x squared. Now, the second thing I'm going to need is some kind of interval. If you remember from uh, your reading of section 5.5, when you find an absolute min or max, we usually talk about the absolute min or max over an interval, like 0 to 1 or something like that. What I could do is say, okay, well, hey, looking up here at this function, P, the price, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means 400 has to, minus 0.4x has to be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, minus 0.4x has to be greater than or equal to minus 400. And finally, x has to be less than or equal. And I got to divide minus 400 by minus 0.4. And I end up with 1,000. All right, and we already know this has to be bigger than or equal to zero, so this gives me essentially an interval. We're going from zero to a thousand inclusive. So to find the maximum weekly revenue and at what value that occurs, which is the X, we need to figure out what any critical values are because remember, absolute mins or max occur either at the end point, so either at zero or a thousand, or at a critical value. So to find critical values, remember, you gotta find the derivative first. So I'm gonna find R prime. That's 400 minus 0.8x. And then I got to say, okay, where is our prime undefined? Uh, nowhere. This is just a linear function. Where is it equal to zero? Or, well, our prime of x equals zero when 400 minus 0.8x equals zero. In other words, when minus 0.8x equals minus 400. In other words, when x equals 500. All right, so this is our critical value. Now remember, the absolute min or max has to occur at 0, 1,000, or 500. However, we also have a special rule called the second derivative test, right? So it says, to, it says that if you have one critical value in your interval, like we do here, only one critical value, then you can use the sine of f double prime to determine what's going on. So let's take a look in this case, since we're talking about R of R double prime. Well, R double prime of X is zero, right? Because the derivative of 400 is zero, and then it'd be minus 0.8, which is obviously less than zero. No matter what you plug into here, you're going to end up with minus 0.8. So it's less than zero for all X. So that includes X equals 500, right? Whenever R double prime or F double prime, whatever function you're looking at, is less than zero for the point you're looking at, and it's only at the only critical value in the interval, then you can say that the point you're looking at is the location of the absolute max. So in other words, we have an absolute max at X equals 500. So this answers the question, how many cameras should be produced? How many cameras should be produced? To maximize the weekly revenue, 500 should be produced. Okay, now the next question is, what's the maximum revenue? Well, the max revenue will be what we get when we plug this in. So that'd be R of 500. In other words, it's 400 times 500 
minus 0 0.4 times 500 squared, which is 100,000. And remember, this is in dollars, so $100,000. We'll figure that all out in a second. All right, and finally, what price should I charge? So that answered this question. What price should I charge? Well, I can use this equation right here to figure out the price. And so for price, I would say, well, 400 minus 0 0.4 times 500, because that's how many we're going to make. So when I calculate this out, I end up with $200. So we can summarize all this information by saying that we have a maximum weekly revenue of $100,000 when producing 500 cameras a week. and selling them at a price of $200 each. So a lot of information came just from this basic idea. And if you think back, this is all the same stuff we use to graph functions. Well, let's look at the next part of this example. So this question says, what's the maximum weekly profit? How much should the company charge for the cameras? And how many cameras should be produced to realize the maximum weekly profit? So once again, we're looking for uh, absolute max, but this time of the profit function. Now, hopefully you remember that the profit function, P of X, is revenue minus cost, R of X minus C of X. Now, we just had R of X a moment ago. R of X was 400X minus 0.4X squared. And so we now subtract C of X, which is 2,000, plus 160x. Okay, so I end up with 400 minus 160, so that would be 240x, and then minus 0.4x squared, and then minus 2,000. So this is our profit function. Okay, we're still on the same interval. Remember, 0 to x to 1,000. Same idea from before. Okay, so if I want to find an absolute max or min, I'm going to find critical values because it's going to occur either at the end point or at a critical value. So P prime would be 240 minus 0 0.8 X. And then the 2000, the derivative of 2000 is zero. So, okay, I set this equal to zero. I say, okay, 240 minus 0 0.8 X equals zero to find the critical values. It's defined everywhere, so that won't help. I get minus 0.8 X equals minus 240. And finally, X equals 300. Okay, so this tells me I need to make 300 cameras a week to maximize the profit. I would think profit's more important than revenue. Um, remember, that's the actual money after the cost. Now, what would that maximum profit be? So the max profit would be what you get when you plug this in. So that would be P of 300. So I plug 300 into this. And when I do that, I end up with 240 times 300 minus 0.4 times 300 squared minus 2,000. And I get 34,000. Now, I sort of skipped a step here, um, and I'll tell you why. Remember in the last uh, example, we went through and we did the second derivative test, right? And you should always do that until you get comfortable with the trick I'm about to tell you. Now, you know the absolute max or min has to occur here, here, or at this critical value. But if there's just one critical value, you can double check it with the second derivative test. However, I happen to know, looking at this function right here, our profit function, that this is a quadratic because it's an x squared and it's pointing downward because it's a minus on front of the, in the front of the x squared. So it's a graph like this. So I know that 300 that we found, the critical value has to be this point right here. So I know it's the max or I know the max occurs there. But again, I'm using my knowledge of functions. And if this was an x cubed, I know that this wouldn't work. So you need to pay attention to either using the second derivative or you can go ahead and do what I just did and recognize what type of function you have. Okay, so I got my maximum profit now. What price should we use? That's when you plug that into right here. And so it'd be 400 minus 0 0.4 times 300 
which is 280. Okay, so now I'm going to summarize all this stuff. So we have a max weekly profit. of $34,000 when making or manufacturing, however you want to say it, 300 cameras per week. And selling them at $280 each. Now this is assuming, of course, you're selling all the ones that you're making, right? So there might be a nicer way to say it, but this is the general idea. This is really what I want you to be able to do this last part, but of course we had to do all the math to get there. But in the end, any computer can do this math, but it takes us to understand what it represents.